Hello, Greg from Balloon Market here and welcome to BMTV. And this week I'm very, very excited to have a brand new guest all the way from Western Canada. We have Jackie Ochitwa. Jackie, hello and welcome. Hi, thank you. Thanks for having me. I've been watching the show for a while and uh, I'm really excited to be on it. Well, thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm just really happy to be talking to somebody in Canada. We've not done that before. So that, that's really, really exciting. I'm the first. You are. Wow. You are. That's so, amazing. Thank you for doing that. I know it's quite early in the morning over there where you are and it's a bit later in the afternoon, but that's fine. That's the joy of technology. That's we fine. can do this. We can do this. Exactly. Right. Well, before we go into what it is you're going to show us how to make, um, mm -hmm. I, I'd like to to find out a little bit more about you and what you've done in the past, how you got into balloons and what your career has been like in the balloon world since you started, was it about 11 years ago, I believe? Yeah, when was it? Like 2009, 2010. Okay, yeah, 11, um, 12 years ago. I yeah. actually started twisting balloons for my kids when they were little. Okay. They were, um, I think like two and four and it was just like a typical weekend. We went to, um, a fair and there was these teenagers twisting balloons in the park and my son got a sword and my daughter got a flower and they thought that was great and it was just like you know the regular 260 like these teenagers didn't even really know what they were doing <laughs> but they had put these things together and uh, we went home and the sword um, unraveled when we got home so my son who was four he was kind of upset about it so I took it and I kind of reverse engineered it and I flipped it around and I'm like oh that's it. Like, how cool is that? And then I fixed the sword, gave it to him, and he was happy. And and the next weekend, um, I was a stay-at-home mom at this point. So, you know, you're just always looking for things to do. We mm -hmm. went to the library, and we got some books on balloon twisting. And cool. that was it. I was hooked from there. I had signed the same book out every two weeks for six months. And I taught myself um, how to twist balloons from, from this little twisting book. And I remember there was a red dragon on the front. And I thought, oh. I'm never going to be able to make that red dragon. It was like three balloons and it had these little bubble twists in there. And and uh, eventually after I think six months, I taught myself how to make that dragon. Fantastic. And, and that was it. Like we didn't have YouTube, you know, way back then. Yeah. We didn't have like the resources that people have nowadays to learn. And I didn't even know about balloon conventions back then. I didn't know there was a community. Yeah. It took me about five years to... Um, to find the Facebook pages and to realize that, you know, there was a whole community and people and yeah, teachers yeah. and yeah. And then it was just like everything opened up. Yeah. That's how you got into balloons, but you had quite an interesting career before that, didn't you? Yes. So my background is in media. I took broadcast news um, in university. And once I got out of university, I had a number of jobs, um, some on air, uh, for television and uh, the one that I had before I had my children was I was a, a radio personality for it's Virgin Radio now it's been shuffled over a couple oh, wow. times but so I did like the news and the traffic and the co-hosting duties in the morning so I would get to work at 4 a.m and pre pre prepare my news for 6 a.m and be on air until 10 a.m and that was my job so 4 yeah. until 10 a.m and then I'd be home and that was my whole day and then we decided to have children <laughs> And we realized nobody will take your children at 4 a.m. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it <just> doesn't happen. <laughs> so um, after I had my second, I decided to, to call it quits on my radio career, at least just put it on hold for a while and stay yeah. home with the kids. So so that's what we did. And, and uh, my dad's really happy he paid for all that time in university. <laughs> 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 Do you think you'd ever go I back to it? I laugh about that. No, you know what? I don't think I will ever go back to it. I mean, I, I love the balloons. And yeah. I think that that education that I got, I'm actually using now. You yeah. know, I, I use it because I, I present and I, I learned how to do that. And I do a lot of stuff. Um, for my YouTube channel and um, for Instagram, where I use all of that training that I learned in the television and radio mm -hmm. side, you know, about how to speak and how to even, you know, cut video together. And yeah. so I tell my dad I'm using it. Yeah. <laughs> it was totally worth it. It was money well just spent. Able, right, it was. Just to be able to stand in front of people and, and to be able to present too, because, you know, that's not something that, that comes easy. But I bet I you... know I was incredibly shy before I got into oh, really? to doing radio and television. Oh, yeah. I know. It's hard to believe. <laughs> but yeah, I was. So I, I bet you never realized at the time that what you were learning there would would ever be used in what you're doing now. I mean, even 10 no. years ago, who'd have, who'd have thought that? So 
No, yeah. it's crazy, honestly. People, that's like the number one question I get. They're like, how did you end up being a balloon artist? This is the craziest thing. And you're right, it's not something that I would ever have thought for myself, but yeah. um, it's a blessing. And I've been able to do things and see parts of the world I, I never would have seen had I not found balloons and, and fixed yeah. my son's sword that day. Yeah, so. yeah. So you obviously serve your local community as well. But you say you've seen parts of the world. Where do you go? What do you do? Well, once I realized there was balloon conventions, I'm like, I have to start going to these. Yeah. That there's a community of people who enjoy doing what I do. Because, you know, you can talk to your husband and your kids about it so much, but they, you know, glaze over after <laughs> some time. So to find this community was amazing. So my first balloon convention was in 2016, I believe, in Dallas. It was my first twist and shout. So I went there fresh face. I had no idea who anybody in the community was and um, stepped off the plane, got into the hotel and literally put my bag down next to me and entered my first um, competition. I'm like, hey, if I'm gonna do this, I'm yeah. going to do this. So um, it was uh, the headband competition. Okay. So we had our balloons in front of us and I think it was like, it was timed, it's like 10 or 15 minutes. And the first thing I made was my little doll and it was little Miss Muffet and I put her on a headband and she had uh, her curds and whey or whatever she was <laughs> eating and some little pigtails. And I ended up getting third place in the headband oh, competition wow. at Twist and Shout at the, the first thing I'd ever, like it was amazing. Yeah. And I met all these people and um, and so from that one, um, a guy named Steve Jones had seen me and we started chatting and he has a little convention called Float the Convention mm -hmm. that he puts on every couple of years. I'm sure you've heard of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's huge here in the in the U.S. as well. And so he asked me if I would teach at his convention. And I'm like, what on earth is happening? I'm like, yes, of course I will. So I went to teach at Float in 2017. And um, it was my first international teaching gig. And from there, uh, the folks at Qualitex had seen me. And they had asked me, uh, I think it was like a week after I got home from teaching at Float, if I would teach at WBC the next wow. year. <laughs> it was Fantastic. literally that fast. So 2018, I taught at WBC and um, they've been so good to me. I've traveled to Brazil and Dubai and like Lebanon and Australia, all over Amazing. the world. Um, yeah, yeah, teaching for Qualitex now. Okay. So it's it's been a whirlwind adventure and it's been fantastic. Yeah, no, that's I, great. I wouldn't change it. Yeah. Of course, the last, the last 18 months or so is probably been a little bit different, but um, it, yes. <laughs> uh, hopefully we will get back to some form of normal pretty soon. And I'd like to ask you about, you, you've, you've talked about decor and mm -hmm. you started twisting. Um, a lot of people that twist don't really get into decor and a lot of people that are decor focused, they don't really use twisting. Mm -hmm. You've done both. What, what is your advice to people? You know what? I find it um, crossing over more and more is becoming kind of like this muddy little thing in the middle now where decorators mm -hmm. are realizing they can use even just little things that twisters do to um, just make their work more personal and um, just look more professional. Yeah. And twisters are finding that they can, you know, grab these round balloons, tie them together and make these organic designs or arches and, and, and just you know, there's a lot of money in decorating as yeah, well. So yeah. I think the crossover is um, is really growing. And that's usually what I teach at conventions. I teach decorators how to twist, how to add those little elements just to make their pieces that more, much more special. Yeah. And their clients really appreciate it. Like that's yeah. something, it's usually like those little twisted elements, those little special things that that people really pick out and they, they're yeah. like, wow, like that's something I can't do. You know yeah. what I mean? That's yeah. something like the normal person can't do. So. Yeah. So they think that's really special. Yeah, no, that's that's, that's great. I, I think there is a lot of, of crossover now. And we have Dr. Bob on sometimes and Rob Driscoll and the detail mm -hmm. they go into. And I'm, I'm, I'm sure you are the same. It does just add that value, doesn't it? And I think it does, particularly over the next, I don't know, 12 months, I'm guessing with all the shipping and, and increase in prices, we're quite lucky that in our industry at the coal face right there, when you are selling directly to customers, if you say something is three, four, five dollars more than it would have been six months ago, 
they wouldn't necessarily mm. know, but you're able to cover your cost as long as you price correctly, I guess. And I'm sure you talk about pricing when you're training and, and all of that. Yes. But it, it's, I think we're quite lucky in this industry to be able to do that right there at the coal face. And because you're selling a, a creative piece, aren't you, more than anything else? Yeah, and I think people really appreciate that, the time yeah. and the effort and the training that goes into it, for yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, we could talk forever. Um, but yes. you are going to show us uh, a little piece now, aren't you, that um, you have created. And what do you, what, what sort of things do you use this piece for? Obviously, this is probably more focused for our US viewers and Canadian viewers, because we don't have these in the UK. Yeah, do you not? No, we don't. Really? No. Oh, that's, well, that's okay. interesting. Okay, that's we'll okay. have to talk about that. So, so I made this originally in 2017, um, the people, from Qualitex had me visit Wichita and they they would do this periodically, have people come in when they had Balloon Magic, the magazine, and you would go down and you would film a video and do some little mm -hmm. um, close up hand tutorials. So I created this little guy. Um, should I show it now? Oh, yes, go I think it should. Okay, I just think you just did. Um, so it's a little fire hydrant. And I use this little one for uh, if I'm doing like a Paw Patrol piece, it's a little okay, cute thing yeah. to have in the corner or just really any sort of puppy piece because, you know, it is the bathroom. <laughs> um, or even if I'm doing like a firefighter piece. So yeah, yeah. I had um, a fire fire party uh, about a week ago and they said, can we order a bunch of candy cups? And I was going to make little fire and I was like, oh, this is so much cuter than fire. Yeah, so yeah. it's oh. just a little kawaii fire hydrant and it's, it's really simple. It's got a few little twists, but um, nothing I don't think decorators couldn't do. Pinch yeah. twists would be the hardest thing here. Yeah. So I'm really curious. What do you guys use to, to uh, get water I, to put out fires in England? That, that we've got a big fire engine. I guess there must be somewhere that they plug it in. You know, I don't know the answer <laughs> to that question. Somewhere. We just don't have things sticking up <laughs> out of the ground. Funny? So there must be things in the ground that they lift up and plug in. Do you know, Alex? Oh. Do you know? Okay, we're yeah. going to have to so find we, yeah, out. They're under, they're... That's the question of the day. <laughs> it should be. <laughs> it absolutely should be. Where do we get the water from to put out fires? Anyway. Where does the water come from? Yes. Anyway, okay. So that, that's, let's go. Show me what you do. Yeah, okay. So I like this one because there's a lot of twisters out there um, who get really comfortable with 260 balloons. Mm -hmm. And they don't realize that there's other sizes. There's other <laughs> fantastic sizes out there. So this one uses three sizes in the red. It uses the 350 uh, mm -hmm. in Qualitex Red and the 160 and, of course, the 260 as well. So it's a great introduction to using different sizes um, for different reasons. And uh, if people have seen my work, they know I'm big on proportion. I really love proportion. I okay. think that plays such a big part in making a piece. So we're going to start with the 350. <laughs> we're going to inflate it about that much. Okay. What do we say that is? About eight inches? Okay. I'm going to tie it off. And then I'm going to make a six petal flower. So once again, <laughs> all about proportion for this. So we're going to try to keep the petals all the same size. Okay. And if you've been on my Instagram page, um, you will see that I do this quite a lot. Just this little six petal flower. I think it's one of my most popular um instagram videos which is funny because you oh, never yeah. know what's going to be popular yeah because yeah. i do a lot of more difficult things and it's always like this simple little flower that gets the most views people are just mesmerized by the way it comes together and it's so simple so all i'm doing is making a loop mm -hmm. measuring it off with my eyes twisting it so you just get a little bubble and then it always goes around the center point and we are going to make Every one about the same size. So this is going to be our base mm -hmm. for our little fire hydrant. You did make you that look very easy. Them over. <laughs> it is very easy. So just like that. Okay. So now I'm going to snip off the end and just wrap it around. That's nice and secure now. Perfect. I'm also going to take this piece and we're just going to tie it off. So I'm just going to snip it off just to make it easier for me to tie. Mm -hmm. okay. So now we have two connection points and I'm going to take that and just wrap it around the base. Now 
kind of looks like a little cool. torpedo. <laughs> so the next step is grabbing our second 260. And we are just going to make the part that goes around the top. So this is when we're getting into our pinch twist. So a pinch twist is a bubble that we're going to pull away from itself. So I'm grabbing the nozzle. Mm -hmm. Do you twist, Karen? Are you a no. twister? How do you... <laughs> <laughs> oh, Al Alex is pointing. Emphatically, no. <laughs> Alex is pointing to himself. So he's been taking a few 260s home and he's been practicing. Oh, really? He was practicing uh, pinch twists, weren't you? So he's, he's nodding That's very, great. very confidently. Yes, I can do a pinch twist, Greg, but uh, I cannot. It gets addictive. I'm sure you could. I'm, I'm sure I could, he given enough. He just enough doesn't want to. <laughs> he's like, I don't want to. Generally, what happens when I put a balloon in my hand, it bursts. So, oh. yeah, I tend to. Okay. Alex is very keen to get me doing that with, with somebody. So oh, I think you should. Maybe at some point in the future. Yes. Okay, so we just made a cluster of three pinch twists, basically. I'm going to make about a hand's length. So mm -hmm. what, we, what we wanted to do here is we want it to reach around okay. the front of that 350. And we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. So three pinch twists. So I'm just making a bubble, pulling it away. Now you're talking about bursting the balloon. You'll notice every time I make a twist, I squeeze. Yeah. And that's just going to soften and push the air out. So you're not fighting so much with a really hard balloon. So I'm going to measure the same amount here. Okay, okay, so we have our cluster of three, our hands length, cluster of three, and another hands length. Now, before I tie this off, I'm actually going to measure it on here. Because we want it snug. Not so snug that it's going to um, make it look like it has a belt on. Now I'm going to wrap that around and I'm just going to use a cutter here on my smart twist. And, yeah. So really simple so far. Yeah. It already looks like a fire hydrant, doesn't it? Does. it? Yeah. I'm just going to clean that up a little bit. So our next step is going to be grabbing our 160s. So we should be able to do this with one 160. We're going to make two loops around our fire hydrant. So I'm going to start with two pinch twists on here. Almost every balloon you start twisting, there's a pinch twist included. So yeah. it's definitely one of those twists you want to learn how to do. And as simple as it is, it's one of them twists that people have problems with, just because it's, it's so little and, and fiddly, right? Yeah. Okay. So we're going to wrap it around. We've got to decide what size our front. I think that's going to be our front. There's always a prettier side. Just like with people. Everybody has a side. Yeah, not my side. Right. It's not. <laughs> I, I don't have a prettier side. <laughs> oh my God. It's like, really? Maybe the back. <laughs> the back, exactly. I was going to say. You can't see your pretty side. So we just made a couple pinch twists here and tucked it in the back. So all of this is going to be hidden in the back. If you really hate pinch twists and you don't want to do them, mm -hmm. you can't even just tie it together in the back there. Nobody's going to see. So I have this left from my 160 that I just used. I'm going to it and do the same thing. We should have had you twisting along to this. Oh, I think we're out of 260. Next time. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> Darn that pandemic and there's no balloons to be found. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Don't you, that's, that's, don't you have that, a warehouse of balloons? That. Wait a second. <laughs> so we're wrapping this around the top. So right above where we did that 260. And just wrapping it around. I'm going to snip off the end. And give it a tie. I think that's going to stink. And that's what we have so far. Cool. So the next thing I'm going to do is add some water. So the water is going to be played by a 160. 
in robin's egg blue <laughs> Now this is a technique I use all the time. If even in my um, centerpieces, you'll see I make these looped curls. Yeah. And the way I do that is I wrap it around my 160 pump, inflate it first. So you saw me inflate it and let mm -hmm. all the air out. And then just inflate it a second time, let some air out. And you'll see I didn't let any air go into the tip. And the reason I did that is I'm going to tie it in to itself. But before that, we're gonna do three more pinch twists. So we take that curled balloon mm -hmm. and we just put three pinch twists in the end. And it should be soft enough because we let that little burp of air out that yeah. it's gonna let you do this. A good trick with twister balloons is not to over inflate. And I think a lot of people make that mistake. Absolutely. So I'm going to take this end and I'm just going to fold it over into those pinch twists. And then we have this little spray of water cool. just like that. Yeah. Yeah. I do like that and technique with the pump. I, I, I love the twist, the, the fact it just yeah. goes into that shape. It's so easy. It's just fun to watch. And even when I used to twist a lot um, for crowds, that would be one of the things that people were like, yeah. what just yeah. happened? Like yeah. they had no idea yeah. that it's that like could magic. happen. Yeah. yeah. And they're like, how does that happen? I'm like, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> it's science something. Just, I don't know. Just once it gets inflated like that, that's how it wants to stay. So we just tied that into the top of our high bench there. So this was pretty much the end of the design that I did uh, when I was doing this for Wichita, but I've mm -hmm. since added a couple just tiny little things that you really don't need, but look super cute. So um, we're going to add a little puff inflated piece. So before COVID, I used to actually puff. Oh, you don't do that anymore. <laughs> no, we do not put our mouths on balloons. I, I never mouth inflated before, mostly because I always say I don't want to ruin my lipstick, but it was mostly because I can't. Yeah. <laughs> It's a really hard thing to do, like to inflate balloons. I have tried it mouth. before. But I, would, I, I don't know how have people Have you tried can, it? I've tried it and I, I literally got nowhere. I don't know how people can do it. And some people just, just no. do it like, you know, they're inflating a normal balloon with their mouth. But yeah, yeah it's crazy. It amazes me. So, yeah, so I would, but don't do that anymore. Just use your little pump. Yeah. And we're just going to wrap around. And that is a puff inflated piece. So I'm just going to tie it. And it just adds a little bit of color and division. Like I said, it's not necessary, but it's kind of fun. Okay, so we're cool. just going to do yeah. one there. And then, um, ever since chrome got invented, I like to add a little bit of it to everything. So we're going to puff inflate chrome. And we are going to take this one and just wrap it around the face. It's just a little bit more detail, like just adding a little bit more value. Yes. If you ask people what my trademark is, I think people would say the detail, right? It's just like the little, little things that I add to the pieces. And it takes no time to do, honestly. So that is over puff inflated. We do mm -hmm. not want that. So I'm going to take that out. And this last one just goes up here just to separate that 160 from the 260 and just to fill up that little bit of space that sometimes can hang up there. And we'll just tie it in the back. Okay. Cool. So really simple design so far. Yeah. Now, I always like to do a little face because I find a face just really sets everything off. Um, and kids love the little face, right? Yeah, yeah. So I like to do um, a kawaii face. Um, one, because it's cute. And two, because it's super simple. It's really okay. just round circles. Are you much of a drawer, Greg? I can see you going home and painting at night. And... Yeah, I do that <laughs> all the time. No, I don't. I don't. Do you? No, you don't. So I used to um, love all things artistic before I even got into balloons. I used to love painting and I used to think I was going oh, nice. to be a baker because I just loved decorating cakes. 
Uh, this was before I found balloons, so. I love that I was able to do something with um, my art background. I mm -hmm. took art all through high school and in university as well. And uh, oh, putting wow, it cool. to work. You don't really need an art degree to do that though. <laughs> it's literally two circles that's, that's and a couple cute. little flicks. Yeah. And then I'm just going to grab my Edding White, which is yeah. um, a great paint pen. I think I've tried every paint pen out there and this one is my favorite for sure. It just goes on opaque and doesn't smudge. And it, uh, I think it's necessary. You just need that bright, little bit. Yeah. And I'm also um, a sticker hoarder. I love stickers. I will put <laughs> okay. stickers on almost every piece that I make. So these are just some little circles that I found at my local dollar store. Mm -hmm. And I find the little circles just look really cute. They add just a little bit of dimension, a little bit of color for cheeks. So I used to do this with Sharpie, but it never goes on quite nicely enough. So I just put some cute little cheeks there. You there. Go. So that really yeah. is detail. So I, I love the detail. It is detailed. Um, so last thing I want to show you is uh, how to turn this into a candy cup, which is a simple thing. So you're going to get your cup. Um, if you guys have 7-Elevens and things like that in the UK. Where we have you convenience get stores. Yeah, you can get these. these you call them Slurpees? Things, yeah. I know we call them different things. Free, uh, what else are they called? Slushies? Slushies is Slushies. what we call them here. Slurpee. Slushies. Yeah. Yes. So we're going to inflate a five inch round. Take it down. And just tie it off. This would be filled with candy, of course. Okay. And then we're just going to take this and wrap it around. Set it in nicely, kind of center. And then this is just going to pop right on top of here. That is so clever. I've never seen that. That is great. That is oh, no. so, so yeah. simple. Oh, it's so simple to do. And these are really inexpensive too. I buy these from a restaurant wholesaler. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's about 10 cents a piece or, or even less, um, which means nothing to you in the UK. <laughs> 10 cents Canadian. But it's They're really inexpensive. Same in pens. Yeah, exactly. So then I just print off a little sticker with my name on it and that goes nicely okay. right on the bottom. Just like that, you're all labeled up. This is full of candy. Fantastic. And that is really simple little candy cup. I love that. Well, thank you so much for that. I also love the fact that you've just done a little bit of marketing there without just, just throwing yes. that in. So do you put that on all your pieces? <laughs> um, I do. I usually have a sticker either on the bag or like on the back of something because um, you can't hand out business cards all the time, right? But yeah. this is, it's like it's connected to the piece and and kids will keep this cheap little cup in the house for yeah. how long, right? Yeah, so exactly. yeah, you're, you're always there on the bottom and it's That's... great. And it's good if you're like handing these out, like a mom will order these for a birthday party and you have 15 of them going out. So now your name is in 15 different houses, right? Yeah, so, exactly. No, that's yeah. absolutely wonderful. I, I love where you've put it there yeah. as well. I can see it right next to you and it's, it's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. So <laughs> Jackie, thank you so much for that. That is really cute. It does look far more complicated when you look at the detail there than, than mm -hmm. it actually was for you to do. So um, yeah, I hope people get a lot of use out of that. So anyway, as a guest on BMTV, and I know you've been briefed, yes. you get to ask the question of the week. So do you have one prepared? I do. Um, so I decided to do kind of a balloon related question. Okay. And I do know the answer to this, um, so I can give it to you after. Okay, so my question is, um, oh, this is related. I even, I even have a prop for my question. Oh, wow. I don't that? think we've had props with questions before. No. So when you're a balloon artist or balloon decorator, all you get for gifts are balloon related <laughs> gifts. So this was my um, gift for last Christmas for uh, a Christmas ornament for my tree. Do you know what Fantastic. this is? Fantastic. Yes, yes, from up. From up. Okay, so my question is, how many 11 inch helium balloons would it actually take to lift Carl's house from the movie up? Well, we don't know how much it weighs, do we? Or do we? <laughs> There, yeah, there is an answer. Oh, there actually is an answer. There is an answer. Oh. Somebody, somebody smarter than me figured it out using, you know, maths. Okay, I, I leave leave <laughs> your comments down below if somebody knows how to work that out. I am really people are googling. Interested. Yeah, <laughs> I am really interested to find out how many that would be. Lots. 
I'm guessing, and it would not Lots. be um, inexpensive to do that at all. So No, the helium would be just yeah, be through crazy, the roof. Wouldn't it? Anyway, yes. Jackie, <laughs> thank you so much. I really do appreciate you uh, talking to us all the way from the other side of the Atlantic. And uh, I hope yes. we get to do this again at some point in the future. And maybe one day beside each other. Who knows? Wow, on a plane and everything. That'd, that'd be, be great. That'd be exciting. I'm going to suggest I come yes. there because I, I do quite like Canada. <laughs> so. <laughs> you should. Anyway, thank you. Thank you so much for that. And thank you, everybody out there for watching. Thank you for subscribing. If you've not subscribed, please do and hit the little bell icon and you'll be notified every time we upload a new show. Thanks again, Jackie. Stay safe, everybody. Stay happy. See you next week. Bye. <laughs>